OBS is a powerful tool for screen recording and streaming. It's totally free and supported on all the major operating systems. But you may have found it a little overwhelming when you first tried it. In this video, I'll clearly explain the concepts of how OBS works. You'll understand it from the ground up, and you'll feel much more comfortable and creative when using this powerful program. So let's jump in. What's up guys, it's Trent, and welcome to my channel where I make software tutorials. Today, we're looking at OBS. I've structured this video to demystify OBS and give you a solid foundation to understand how this program actually works. Instead of just telling you what buttons to press, I'll explain to you the fundamental concepts. After that, we'll look at how you can make recordings, and then we'll check out streaming. In the section on settings, you'll see some ways you might want to configure OBS. And finally, we'll look at profiles and scene collections, so you can see ways to easily save your layouts and settings. Now, what exactly is OBS? OBS stands for Open Broadcast Software, and it's a program for screen recording and streaming. For example, if you wanted to record your desktop and add in webcam and a microphone feed, you could use OBS for that. Or if you wanted to set up a gaming live stream and connect it to Twitch or YouTube, you could use OBS for that too. OBS is 100% free to use, and it's available on Mac, Windows, and Linux. You can download it for your system at obsproject.com. The program is open source, but it has sponsorship from major companies like YouTube, Twitch, NVIDIA, and Intel. With backing like that, you know this program will be around for a long time. Now it's important to understand what OBS is not. OBS is not a video editor. If you want to edit and reassemble your footage, you'll need to use a video editing program for that. If you're looking for awesome free video editing software, I recommend DaVinci Resolve. So the workflow that I use to make my videos, like the one you're watching right now, is I use OBS to record my desktop, webcam, and mic. And then I load the footage into my preferred video editor, DaVinci Resolve, and I edit it there. So now let's actually look at OBS itself. One of the first things I want to show you is just how to get your interface back to the default state in case you make a mess of things. So I have the default interface set up here, and it consists of these areas called docs. You can see there's the controls, scenes, sources, audio mixer. Let's say you accidentally make a mess of these docs. Like, I don't know, you just click and drag stuff. Everything's everywhere. It's all out of order. Everything looks horrible. Maybe things are missing. Somehow you've accidentally clicked things and just nothing looks good anymore. The way we can reset back to our default state is we can go to View and then Reset UI. So I'll click that button. And that gives me a little warning message here just asking me if I'm really sure. I'll click Yes. And now my interface is back to its normal state. Now if you've done some more advanced stuff with the docs, you may also need to go to Docs, Reset Docs, to fully reset them. And then just click Yes. And now we're back in our normal default state. So just to review, to get back to your default state, you can go to View, Reset UI. And if that doesn't reset everything, you can go to Docs, Reset Docs. Okay, now let's dig into the two fundamental concepts of OBS. These are your sources and scenes. A source is something that you want to capture in your recording or stream. A source can be your monitor display, a webcam, a game, a microphone, and many other assets on your computer. A scene is a collection of sources. For example, I can have a scene that contains a monitor source, a game source, and a microphone source. So down here I have docs for my scenes and sources. By default, I have one scene here, and there's no sources added to it yet. Now up here is where things get interesting. This is my canvas, and it's going to show the current scene I'm working on. So let's create a basic scene. Here's the scene I want to create. I just want to capture my monitor and webcam, put a logo in the bottom right corner, and also capture my microphone input. So these things we want to add are just sources. So I have my scene selected here. I'll just give it a better name. I'll right click on it. I'll click rename. And I'll just call it demo scene. And now to add a source, I click on the plus button here. So I'll click add source. And you can see there are many options here. The options you see may vary depending on what's installed on your computer and what system you're on. So first let's add a monitor. And that's just going to be a display capture. So I'll click on display capture. Now on Mac, you may need to add additional permissions for this to work. So make sure you do that. But as you create the source, you can give it a new name. I'll just go with the default name here, display capture. I'll click OK. And now I have this menu here where it's asking me what display I want to connect to. So for capture method, I'll just keep it to automatic. For the display, you can select what monitor you want. So if I click this drop down, I have multiple monitors here. I'll select the other one. Now you can see my other monitor here. This is my recording session for this video, actually. But I'll go back to the first one. Sometimes it's hard to know which monitor is which just by the name. I recommend selecting one of them and checking the preview to see if it's the one you want. You can also choose to capture the cursor. I'll leave that selected. And then I'll click OK. Now, one thing you notice is kind of this Hall of Mirrors effect here. And that's because I'm recording the screen that OBS is on right now itself. So it keeps capturing itself and gives this infinite loop effect. 
There is a way to disable that if you want to. You can go to settings. And then under general, you can check this box that says hide OBS windows from screen capture. I'm going to leave this unchecked because I'm using OBS to record this video itself. But if you want to remove that effect, you can use this checkbox here. I'll cancel out of this menu. And one thing I'm going to do to make it so it's not confusing is I'm actually going to hide my display capture right now. So I'll click the eye here to hide it. And this will just make it a little easier to see as I add stuff onto my canvas here. When I want to turn it back on again, I can just hit the eye again. But I'll leave it off for now. So my webcam is another source. So I'll click the plus here. And it's going to be the video capture device. So I'll click this on here. I'll put webcam in parentheses at the end so we know what it is. Then I'll click OK. And now I can see my webcam here is available for selection. If you have multiple devices, you can choose the different ones here. I'll just go with USB video camera. And there's other options here, but we can leave most of them as the default. You can flip it if you want, but I don't really want to do that. We'll just leave the basic options and I'll click OK. So now my webcam got added to my canvas. Now, if I don't like the sizing or positioning, I can change it easily. I can drag the image to different parts of the screen. It snaps to the corners. I can also drag the corners of the image to resize it. If I hold shift, I can change the perspective, but I'll just undo that. Now, what if I want to add a logo to the bottom right of my screen here? Well, that's just an image source. So I'll click the plus button here. I'll click image. I'll rename image to logo so we know what it is. I'll click OK. And now I can browse to a file on my computer. Let's browse to a transparent PNG. I like this one here. Let's do that. Open. And now we have my image. So I'll click OK. And it's been added to my canvas. Now, clearly, it's way too big. Let me show you an easy way to get this on the screen. With my logo selected here, I'll select Edit, Transform, and then I'll select Fit to Screen. So I'll click this button here. And you can see my image is now fit to the screen. Of course, it's still too big, so I'll just resize it easily now. And I'll drag it over here to the right. Maybe want it to be smaller. And there we have my logo. Now we have these two elements on the screen, my logo and my webcam here. One thing we can do is lock elements if we want to make it so we don't click on them anymore. So for example, my webcam logo, I can click the lock here. And now I can't click on it anymore. And this is nice if you have lots of sources on your screen and you're accidentally clicking the wrong stuff. You can lock what you want in place and then you won't accidentally select it anymore. I'll unlock it. Now, one important thing to understand about the layer stack here is that the order matters. The higher up something is, the more in front it will be. So if I take my logo, if I drag it over my webcam, it's going to be in the front. So I'll move this over here. If I turn on the desktop display again, you can see my image and the logo in the front. But if I move the display capture up to the top, they're not visible anymore because the display capture is in front of them. So you may run into that situation. And in that case, what you want to do is just make sure the ordering here is correct. So with my display capture selected, I can drag it down. Or you can use the arrows to move things up and down. So I'll click the down arrows. And now it's behind again. Let me hide my display capture again just so you don't get this mirror effect. Now, if I wanted to, I could add a microphone source. So I'll click plus. And I'll select audio input capture. Once again, just give it a name you want. Click OK. And then you could select the device you wanted here. I'm using the Yeti stereo microphone right now. I don't want to add it to my scene because it might screw up my main recording here that you're listening to. So I'll just click cancel. But if you did want to add a microphone, that's how you do it. Now, one thing to notice when you select these sources is that you have the option to change their properties here. For example, if I want to change the logo, I can click logo here. And then I have the option to change the file. So I'll click browse. I'll click another one, logo two. I'll click open. And then it nicely fits it into the existing space. Now let me show you again how to fix a source if you make a mess of it. For example, let's say I have my video capture device and maybe I accidentally resized it. I dragged it half off the screen. It's just kind of a mess. It doesn't look that great. Somehow I got into this situation. So with that source selected, I can go to edit, transform, and I can just select reset transform. Now it's back to its initial position and then I can go and put it back in the better place again. Now let's look at how we can actually make a recording. And you may have noticed this button down here that says start recording. We'll press that in a second, but first we need to determine where our output file will actually go. So to do that, we can click on settings and then we select output. And then here we have our recording path. So I'll browse. I'll create a new folder on my C drive. I'll just call it temp video. I'll select the folder and I'll click apply. Now I'll turn my desktop back on. I've disabled my webcam for the time being. Then I'll click Start Recording. Now let me open up some type of application, maybe MS Paint. I'll draw some type of house. And that's my video. So I'll go back to OBS. And now I'll click Stop Recording. Now on my computer, I'll go to that file. This is on my C drive, Temp Video. And now I have the file here, so I can play it. 
So I'll double click on it. And the file is playing here in my VLC media player. I can click through it. And this is my screen recording. So I'll close that. And that's really the basics of recording. You go to settings, make sure you set it to the right output path, and then press start recording. And then you can stop it when you're done. Now let's look at streaming. To get started with streaming, you'll want to make sure you have an account set up with one of the supported services. To see what OBS supports, you can click settings and then click stream. And under service, there's a drop down of all the services that are supported. You'll need to connect your account or select the stream key provided by the service. So if I select YouTube, I can click connect account or I can use the stream key here. So I'll cancel this. Now full explanation of all the streaming settings is beyond the scope of this video. But to summarize, once you have streaming set up, you can click start streaming and you'll be prompted to manage the broadcast. So I'll click manage broadcast here. Now you can create a new broadcast from scratch. Or if you have a broadcast scheduled, you can click select existing broadcast and it will be listed here. I stream on YouTube and usually I create the streams ahead of time. So I select existing broadcast and then I have it here to select. And the way YouTube works is that once I start streaming from OBS, I have to click one more button on my YouTube dashboard to enable the live stream. This process will vary depending on what service you use and how you want to start streaming. Let me know down in the comments if you want to see a longer video on streaming setups. Now one feature of OBS that is really cool is called studio mode. And you can see that button down here. Now before I click on it, let me create another scene. I have my main scene here. I'm just calling it the streaming scene. It's my audio input, just my logo over here and also a display capture. But I'm gonna create another scene and this scene is just going to be a video. And this video will say starting soon. So I wanna run this before my stream starts. So once again, for the time being, I'm just gonna disable my display capture here just so it's less distracting. So let's create the new scene for our video. So I can click the plus here. I'll call it starting soon video. And I'll click okay. So we have a new scene here with no sources. Let me just widen this up a bit so we can see it more easily. So I'll add a source for my video. So I'll click plus. And to add a video to a scene, you're going to select media source. So I'll select media source. I'll call it starting soon. I'll click OK. And now I can browse for the video file on my computer. So I'll click browse here. And I have this video here that says starting soon that I downloaded. Let me select that. I'll click open. And then I'll select loop also because I'm going to want this video to just loop forever. So I'll select that. The other settings I'm just going to leave as default for now. So I'll click OK. And now you can see on my canvas, my video is playing. And it's about 10 seconds long. It's just going to keep looping infinitely here because I set it to loop. So now let's talk about our studio mode. So I'm going to click on the studio mode button. And now we have our two windows. On the right side, we have our program view. Program is what we're actually displaying to people viewing our stream. So right now, if people were watching our stream, they would see this starting soon video. On the other side, we have preview. And preview is where you can queue up the next scene. So if I select a different scene, it's going to load into my preview here. And now if I want the preview to be the main scene, I just click the transition button. And now over on the program view, my stream is showing this scene here. So if I wanted, I could add other scenes here. I'll add another one. Maybe I'll just call this title scene. I'll click plus and I can add an image. And I'll just load some thumbnail that I used recently on one of my own live streams. I'll load this one here. I'll click OK. I can resize it. So if I was preparing to go live with this, what I could do is I could get my starting soon video ready. Sometimes the video doesn't actually play on the preview side, but I'll transition it to the program side. So I'll click transition. So now on my stream, this starting message would be displayed. And then on the left side, I could either queue up my streaming scene or maybe I want to get my title scene ready here. So I'll have that up. So then once my stream is started, maybe I want to start with a title screen so I could transition there and they'd see my title screen. Then I could get my streaming scene set up and I could transition into that by clicking transition. So whatever scene you select down here is going to go into your preview and it's only going to be seen by your audience if you decide to transition it into the program view. So there are many creative ways to use this studio mode, especially if you're going to be doing streaming. Now let's look at the settings in OBS. Now, as you can imagine, there are many settings and going over all of them would probably bore you to tears, but I do want to give you some of the highlights. So I'll click the settings button here. And first we have this general tab. There are a lot of options here for the UI and how you want to see things. You can scroll through and decide what you want to show and not show. So the streaming tab is where you connect to your streaming service. I'm set up with YouTube here and you can view the other options here if you want to configure your own streaming. Output is going to be where you set a lot of your bit rates and the quality of your recordings. So for my streaming bitrate, I do 6,000 kilobits per second. 
Remember that down here under recording is where you're gonna set the output of your files when you record. You can choose different file formats to record in. I use the default format of MKV. This format generally works well and is supported by my editing programs. You can also try something like MP4. Just keep in mind that with MP4, if OBS crashes while you're in the middle of a recording, you're going to lose your whole recording file. So that's one of the shortcomings of that format. Next we have audio. And this one's really important. By default, you may notice that your audio is getting doubly recorded. That's gonna happen if you added your audio into one of your scenes and you also had one of these enabled. So I like to disable all of these and manually add my audio to the scenes. As a side note, I recommend always making a short test recording before doing a long recording session. And really listen to the audio carefully and make sure it's sounding the way you want. And of course, check the video quality and setup too. In video settings, we can see our canvas resolution and the output resolution. And typically I have these be the same thing, which is my monitor resolution. There is one big situation where I make them different. I'll talk about that in an upcoming video. And I just leave the frames per second down here at 60. And then we have the hotkey tab. Basically everything can be set as a hotkey. So if you don't wanna be constantly switching to OBS, you can just set it to a hotkey so it can automatically perform certain actions. So you can see the popular ones are likely gonna be starting and stopping recording, pausing and unpausing. You can enable the streams, starting and stopping streaming. Pretty much everything you can think of is here. Accessibility is about the color options of your user interface. Sometimes depending on the background elements you have, certain colors might not stand out that well, so you can change them here. For example, the borders on your selections in the canvas. By default, they're red, but you can make them something else. And at the end, we have the advanced tab. Most of these I have left the same. I have the process priority set to normal. The video settings I haven't changed too much. Down here on the recording, you can change the format of your output file. So if you want it to be in a different hours and date format, you can change that. You can also enable a stream delay when you start it and the number of retries for reconnecting to the stream. Under the help menu, you can check for updates for OBS. So I'll click this. And currently there's no updates now as I record this video. Now OBS will also check for updates when you start it. And here's a pro tip for you streamers. If you open OBS five minutes before your stream starts and it prompts you to install updates, don't install the updates. Only update OBS when you know you have some free time to fix things if they go wrong. In other words, not immediately before starting an important stream. Usually nothing bad happens from an update, but every once in a while there'll be some conflict with the video driver or some other file that you have to deal with. And it's kind of stressful to try to solve those things right before going live on the internet. So I recommend updating after your stream when you have some time to fix things if there's a problem. Let's look at how you can use profiles and scene collections to keep your OBS configurations better organized. Up here, we can see a profile menu. And what a profile is going to do is store your settings. So I have different profiles here for screen recording, streaming, my OBS demo here. And each profile has its own group of settings here. So if I'm on YouTube streaming right now, if I click settings, if I go to stream, I see my YouTube configuration here. Let me cancel that. If I go to one of my other profiles, like let's look at OBS demo. If I click settings on the stream, you're not gonna see the YouTube connection anymore. So these settings only apply to the current profile you have selected. If you do streaming and recording, you'll appreciate how these settings can be separated into different profiles. That way you can easily toggle back and forth. Next, we have scene collections. And each scene collection is going to have a different group of scenes down here. So right now I'm on my OBS demo scene collection. If I change it to screen recording, notice how my scenes changed down here. I'll go to my streaming setting. And again, you can see it changed again. So the scene collection is a good way of grouping different scenes together. Now what's really important to understand is that scene collections do not change your profile. So you can change each of these separately. I can select any of these scene collections and I can use them with my, say, streaming profile or my screen recording profile. Changing the scene collections does not change the settings. And likewise, changing the profile will not change my scenes. So that was a crash course in OBS. If you learned anything from this video, leaving a like will help it get seen by more people. I'm planning more videos on OBS features, so consider subscribing to my channel if you want to be notified when they come out. And if you have any specific topics you want me to cover, feel free to leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.